Scottish football has been dominated by two teams for, um, well, ever, really, since 1986. And in 1985, I believe that was probably Sir Alex Ferguson's Aberdeen side, wasn't it? For 37, 38 years, it has been Celtic and Rangers. That is all that has won the Scottish Premiership. In this video, we are hopefully going to change that with one team, and that team will be St Mirren. We are going to break the top two. I don't even, I don't necessarily want to win the league. I just want to not be a two-team league. I want to split Celtic and Rangers. That's what I want to do. I want St Mirren to basically become one of the best three teams in Scotland. And by doing that, we need to basically win the league, finish second, or a cup. That's my goal. I think the cup's probably more likely. We need to win the Scottish Cup, not the Viaplay Cup, which is a weird thing that... Uh, we'll probably still lose to Celtic, but I think it's actually like Celtic's under-18s that normally wins this one, isn't it? So we need to try and win the Cinch Premiership or finish second in the Cinch Premiership or the Scottish Cup, which the Cup's more likely. It's almost certainly going to be the Cup, isn't it? Anyway, we're in charge of St Mirren. We have £680,000 to spend to try and improve the St Mirren side to make them season one kind of competitive I guess is what we need to do. Right we've jumped forward to the end of the summer transfer window and already we are very competitive. We are up into first place. Three wins out of a possible three. We have beaten Aberdeen, Dundee and Hibs. A 5-2 win. We've scored a lot of goals in fact. We've actually scored 11 goals in our first three matches. What transfer business have we done to be able to do this? Well let's take a look. We've signed two players. First of all Dylan Phillips is a 20 year old English goalkeeper signed on a free transfer formerly of Ustenda over in Belgium for some reason. And we've also picked up Ravel Morrison because I feel like this is the way this save is going to go. We are going to pick up failed Premier League footballers. Ravel Morrison on a free transfer. He got released by DC United. Has been on a free, I assume, for like a year, maybe? I don't know, but we've picked him up on a free transfer. So far, he's done okay. He's got high rating. He's not got any assists or anything like that, but Ravel Morrison is in. We've also sold this man. He was never going to play for us. So that is all that we have done when it comes to transfer business. When it comes to formation, we are doing the 4-2-3-1 game press straight out of the box. We're not doing a downloaded tactic in this video. And it is Phillips and Morrison are the only players we are locking in. We have already got, if we scroll down, top goal scorer, Lewis Jameson, looks pretty good. And at 21, if we can keep hold of Jameson for a few years... He might be the man to propel us to second place. I'm not expecting to win the league. To propel us into second place in the Scottish Premiership. And speaking of, we're expected to finish seventh. So, anywhere in the top half is, is a positive. It's a win. That's what we need to kind of hope happens. If we can finish in the top half, perfect. If we can finish in the top five, we will get into Europe. Which I think might need to be the objective. If we can get into Europe, extra money... Extra reputation, all that cool kind of fun stuff that we realistically need to try and be competitive. So with that in mind, let's jump to the end of season one and see how well we've got on. Have we won the league? Probably not. Have we done any good in any of the cup competitions? Also, probably not. But have we finished in the top five? That needs to be the goal. I've got a very smug look on my face right now. We finished third. We finished third in the Scottish Premiership. Third place on goal difference, admittedly, maybe could have been fourth, but we finished third place. We're in the Europa League in season two with this St Mirren side. How did we do in the cup? Knocked out in the quarterfinal by Livingston. We got to the Viaplay Cup final where we got absolutely smashed by Celtic, which is no surprise to anybody. I mean, we were... We were third and then dropped down to sixth? I, I'm so confused. Wait, did we finish sixth? Did we finish sixth? I'm so confused. Why did I say we finished sixth? I have no idea what any of that means. It says we're third. I'm taking third. We're certainly not sixth. That's that's not a thing that's happened. Obviously, we're not going to go through and look at all of the results, but it looks like the end of the season, we did not win a single match from March through to the end of May. Um, Cool. Not not great, was it? We barely what, got any points in the championship phase. Where were we at there, then? Maybe, I mean, surely we weren't second. The fact that we we still somehow managed to beat Hearts and we were just absolutely atrocious in the final five games or six games of the season or however many games it was, I will take it. I've just seen as well Celtic's top goal scorers. They've got 24, 22 and 20 all in the top goal scorers. We've got, I mean, fair play. 
Lewis Jameson's there. 17 goals for us. That's good. Right, we are going to jump forward to the start of Season 2, where we're going on a little European adventure. What money have we got? Two, two million. It's probably not going to go far. Right, it's the 1st of July in Season 2. And we've already done some transfer business. Not a huge amount of transfer business, because basically the window's only just open. We have brought in, I want to say two, maybe three players on free transfers. First of all, from Hearts, we have signed Benny Banningheim, who is a Democratic Republic of Congo central midfielder. Decent player, I think. Hopefully should be good. From Glen Turan over in Northern Ireland, we have signed Connor McMenamin. McMenamin. Connor McMenamin. He's had an interesting career. 50 goals for Glen Turan in 114 appearances, 17 goals for Clifton Mill, 17 goals as well for Warren Point, also played for Glen Turan previously. This is his first expedition outside of Northern Ireland, apparently. Hopefully, it's a fruitful one for both of us. We have also signed Arthur Okonkwo, who is an Arsenal goalkeeper, actually spent some time out on loan at Crew Sturm Graz. Once again, free transfer. Not sure whether he's going to be playing a huge amount of football for us, but he's another player that I think we kind of needed. We've still got about £2 million to spend, however, I'm expecting most of that might get shifted over to our wage budget, which is horrendously low. It's £50,000 a week. Celtic are probably using that on one player, so we might shift some of that money around to maybe bring in some more free transfers. Let's just see how well, how well we get on. We're going to jump forward to the end of the summer transfer window. There will be more transfers going on. Transfers like Jaden Dans, the Liverpool superstar wonder kid whatever we've signed him on a free transfer and loaned him out to sterling he's not very good right now in this version of football manager but Jaden dance has joined on a free transfer we have also loaned in harvey davies from liverpool on loan until the end of the season i mean we needed a better goalkeeper i'm not convinced we also had a pretty bad injury to our number one goalkeeper which is why we brought this guy in We've also strengthened up front with Johnson Clark Harris, the 30-year-old Jamaican international formerly of Peterborough. 85 goals and 172 league appearances for Peterborough. Clark Harris, I'm hoping, is one of those players that will just score goals for fun. Already scoring a few goals in the Europa Conference League and a goal in the Premiership as well. This one's big. This one's a very big signing. Taylor Harwood Bellis from Manchester City. Contract expired at the end of the season. We picked him up on a free transfer. The one thing that is concerning me is he does have a minimum fee release of £13 million to foreign clubs, which I thought, that's fine. No team from Spain's going to sign him. Till I realised, we're in Scotland. England is a foreign club. So any team in England could come in and go, we'll take him. £13 million is still a lot of money, so I'm not massively concerned. But Taylor Harwood Bellis has that minimum fee release, which is kind of something we need to keep an eye on. We've also signed a 28-year-old Deli Alley. So, Ravel Morrison did all right for us last season. He's immediately been replaced by Deli Alley, And this, I think, is very good. I think this is a really good signing for us. I'm hoping he can do okay for us as well this season. He's already played nine times for our St Mirren side, just getting two assists, both of them in the league. But Deli Alley on a free transfer. I'm happy with that. That's good. And that is it. That is all the transfer business we've done. Like I said, the window is now closed. One thing that's concerning me is if we take a look at the league table, we are currently rooted to the bottom with one point. We will come back to that in just a minute. We're in a lot of competitions. The Europa League, we got knocked out by Bodo Glimt from Norway. It is from Norway, which means we go into the Europa Conference League. The problem is with that, we got knocked out by Borussia Mönchengladbach, which means we're out of Europe. Um, yeah, not ideal. We're out of Europe before September even rolled around, which is not good. We are obviously in the uh, Scottish Cup and the Via Play Cup, but this is a worry. What's gone on? Is the league or is Europe a distraction for us? Is that the issue? We've lost to Motherwell. We've lost 5-1 to Queen's Park. That's a massive defeat. That's an awful defeat as well. At home to lose 5-1 to Queen's Park. 2-1 against Celta, which is fine. You kind of have to take that one on the chin. And then a 3-3 draw against Hibs that it's not started well it's not started well at all when it comes to players that we are forced playing it is we're keeping the same formation but we're sticking with Dele Alli as the attack midfielder Clark Harris as the lead striker which is kind of harsh because Lewis Jameson obviously scored a lot of goals last season for us 17 in the league and he's probably not going to play for us this year round but you know the game's the game Clark Harris is a better footballer he's hopefully going to get us some more goals Right, we're now going to jump to the end of the season and hopefully we have turned this around. We've gone from finishing third place to maybe in a relegation scrap. Although we're only four games in, still plenty of time. Let's jump forward to the end of season two. Well, we've done it again. We have finished third place. 
going from rooted to the bottom of the table after four games and then 34 games later being sat third place in the table. If we actually did all right in those first four games, maybe picked up six, nine points, we'd still be third because Rangers and Celtic are too far away. But the fact that we are consistently finishing in third place is good. There's something happened here, didn't it? Something That's the turning point. Around match day eight, something went on and we suddenly flew up the table, which is fine. We got basically August out of the way, which was just a nightmare mess. September was filled with draws and then October rolls around and we go on a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 game unbeaten run, including beating Celtic and drawing with Rangers. That's, I'm, okay, that's good. I'm happy with that. We also got revenge against Queen's Park, which is also good. We get knocked out of the Scottish Cup in the fifth round, which is fine. It's understandable. We play Celtic. And then we actually picked up points in the championship group as well. Harwood Bellis getting a goal. Deli Alley as well scoring against Queen's Park. I mean, third place in the championship is pretty good going. And Conor McNamin actually has done very well. 13 goals in the league in 36 starts. So his first season outside of Northern Ireland, I'm happy with that. He's done very well. Speaking of somebody who's done very well, Delhi has managed to get 14 goals as well in 36 starts up in Scotland, north of the border. I'm very happy with that. I'm very, very happy with that. Arguably, this is his best season ever. Is almost. That season there with Spurs was his best season ever. His second best season ever playing for St Mirren. We've also got Johnson Clark Harris as well, chipping in with 14 goals. Just nine in the league. That's kind of disappointing. In case you're wondering as well, Jaden Dans at Sterling in League One. He's managed to score 10 goals, six of them in the league, four in the Scottish Cup. So he's done all right as well. And to finish off season two, Taylor Harwood Bellis has interest from foreign clubs in the shape of Sheffield United, West Brom and Wolves. Um, he still has that minimum fee release of £13 million. I don't think we're going to get rid of it. He might be gone in the summer. Let's find out, shall we? So for our second European adventure of this save, we've got £1.1 million to spend. It's not good, is it? It's certainly not good. We have already done some investing in free transfers. It's the 1st of July, so contracts have expired. We brought some players in. Liam Scales has joined from Celtic, which I think is a good signing. For free, I think that's a very good signing. We've also brought in Ryan Fraser, which I'm not convinced this is a good idea, but there's something there, surely. At 31 years of age, he can play in multiple positions. He's probably not going to be getting a huge amount of football. Maybe we stick him on the left-hand side. Maybe we bring him off the bench, but Ryan Fraser is in. We've also gone back to Liverpool to sign up Billy Cumetio, the 22-year-old French centre-back, once again a free transfer, spent last season out on loan at Rotherham, season before that at Kilmarnock. I think there's something there. I think he's good. He's probably good enough to play for us now, isn't he? And to complete our free transfers so far, Nathan Wood, at 23 years of age, signed from Swansea on a free transfer. He's good. I think we've got some very good central defenders now. We have also loaned out Jaden Dans to Carlisle for a season, so it's going to be another year of no Jaden Dans playing for St Mirren, but maybe playing in England, maybe at a higher level, question mark, slightly higher level, he'll get some more goals, which is good. Right, we're going to jump forward to the end of the transfer window, see if we've done any more business, which I think we probably will have. We have sold Ravel Morrison. He has left the club. He's moved over to Rio Grande Valley for £35,000. Basically, the moment Delhi signed for us, Ravel Morrison was never going to kick a ball again for us, was he? So he's been moved on. We've got some money. It's fine. He did all right. 46 league games, six goals. But the big one is Johnson Clark Harris leaving, signing for Al Hazem over in, I assume, Saudi Arabia for £3 million. He didn't set the world on fire, which is kind of what we were hoping he would do. And £3 million is not a bad return for one season for a player that costs us literally nothing. So we're okay with that. Joining the club in no particular order, we have Binguru Kamara, might be his name, signing from Pal, Senegalese international goalkeeper on a free transfer. I think he's good. I think he's our new number one. In the middle of the pitch, signing from Boca, we have Augustin Almendra, 25-year-old Argentine central midfielder, can play basically in the middle, but also slightly deeper, which is actually the position we're going to have to play him. Almendra on a free transfer, once again, good bit of business if you ask me. One of the reasons why I felt comfortable with selling Johnson Clark Harris is Troy Parrott, 23-year-old Irish striker, 36 caps, 13 goals to his name on a free transfer, got released by Spurs, we've picked him up. His finishing is a bit concerning of 11. His concentration and composure and decisions also of 11 is a bit concerning. But so far, he's hit the ground running, scoring three goals in seven starts in all competitions. 
And we did also spend a bit of money, £275,000 on Mikey Johnston from Celtic left winger. Maybe a right winger Irish international once again. I think he's a good player. He's definitely going to do the job for us. Problem is, the season hasn't started particularly well at all. We have played four games. We've drawn twice against Hibs and Dundee. We've lost twice against Celtic and Queen's Park. Why are Queen's Park just our bogey team? What is going on there? But anyway, it doesn't matter. We're down in 11th place after four games. Hopefully we can turn it around much like we did last season. And we'll finish third place. It'll be fine. We are also in the Europa League. I think we've got through qualifying rounds. I think that's what that means. So we have played Bodo Glimt, the team that knocked us out of the Europa League last season. We have actually managed to get past them this time around. Troy Parrott with a goal, McNamin with two, and Harwood Bellis as well. So we are in to the Europa League proper which might be a bit of a distraction, if I'm honest. I don't think we're good enough to be in the Europa League proper, but there we are. We're going to go on holiday now till the end of the season, and we're going to see how well we've done. Can we finish third place? Can we get out of the Europa League group phase? I feel like probably not. I don't think we're getting out of the Europa League. Third place in the league, I think, kind of has to be our target now. We're start starting to put our stall out and say we are the third best team in Scotland. We want to be in the top three. We don't want to be the third best. We want to be potentially the first, second or third best. That's kind of my goal for this save. So let's jump forward to the end of the season. Um, yeah, right. So th this that's that's not good, is it? The fact that we don't have a job anymore and the St Mirren job is available in the Cinch Premiership. What happened? What happened? So St Mirren, where did they finish? They finished seventh in the end. So we got, did we get sacked because we finished seventh? That seems harsh because we were not massively far away. Let's take a look at the schedule then. What happened? I assume we got sacked maybe here. I mean, that's a, not the best run. Losing to Rangers, Hearts and Aberdeen. Losing also twice against Colne in the Europa League knockout rounds. We got through the knockout rounds, everybody. That's impressive. So when did we get sacked? We got sacked at the end of the season. We just got sacked at the end of the season. So the 18th or the 5th, which is like two weeks ago. So we did the entire season. They were okay with that. We did not do well in the relegation group. Draws with Ross County, draws with Motherwell, draws with Kilmarnock, a defeat against Dundee. We beat Queen's Park. Good. I mean, I, ha I have this weird hatred for Queen's Park because of this save now, and I don't know why. But this has kind of put a bit of a spanner in the works. This has put a bit of a spanner in the works. Was there any reasons why things might have gone wrong? So did anything happen in January? I'm, my worry my worry is confirmed. So we sold Taylor Harwood Bellis after I did the January transfer window and went on holiday because our window closed. We sold Taylor Harwood Bellis. I did some more transfer business. I did some more. And then on the 2nd of February, which was two days after our window closed... Burnley signed Harwood Bellis for £13 million. We did sell Alex Gogic for £1.1 million to Hearts, and then he's retired, which is a bit of a strange thing to do, but fair enough, £1.1 million is pretty good. We signed, actually, in December, technically, Marvellous Nakamba on a free transfer, which I think is not bad business. Colin Rosler on a free transfer, son of Uwe Rosler, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. It is the son of Uwe Rosler. And we signed Sebastian Lentelli, for £650,000, a brand new goalkeeper, because I brought him in because, uh, what's his name, Kamara, I don't think he was he was very good, conceded 38, just five clean sheets, not ideal. So we did some business, we then went on holiday, and Burnley ruined us. Burnley ruined us. Well, the fact that we've been sacked means that we've now got two more seasons left of this simulation without a club, which I guess means... We are on the hunt for a new job. So, what jobs have we got available? We need, we're staying in Scotland. So, we've got Forfar, we've got Spartans, we've got Kelty Hearts, and we've got St Mirren, which obviously we cannot take the St Mirren job. And none of those are interesting. A championship side I'd take. A premiership side, obviously, I would take. I don't want League 1 or League 2. That is too far down. We are going to jump forward to the start of the next season, where hopefully we have a job. Welcome to our brand new club, Inverness Caledonian Thistle, in the Championship. We have had to drop down a league to the Championship to take over Inverness. Now, with two seasons left of this five-season simulation, we are not going to be able to break into the top two, so we're going to have to shift the goalposts. And those goalposts will now be shifted to winning the Scottish Cup. 
in two seasons with a championship side. I don't. I, it's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen. But the fact, right? We need first of all promotion. I guess needs to be on there. We need to get promoted to the Premiership, and then secondly, Scottish Cup. That's that's our objectives. I feel like I feel like promotion might happen. If it doesn't happen this season, we're screwed, aren't we? We have to get promoted in season four, and then win the Scottish Cup in season five, and ideally win the ch Premiership in season five as well. You know, we kind of still need to try and do that. With our Inverness side, we've got half a million pounds to spend. Have we done any business so far? I feel like we probably haven't. We're not in charge of any of this. So all of this has happened without our knowledge. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Right, anyway, we're going to jump forward to the end of the summer transfer window. And you're going to see what we've actually tried to do with this Inverness side. First of all, we are up into second place in the table. Three wins, two draws, zero defeats so far. We have managed to beat Air, Kilmarnock and Adrianians. We have drawn with Hamilton, that's what they're called. And Falkirk. I knew you said Hillmarnock. It's not It's not a team, is it? Kilmarnock is a team, and we've already beaten them. But we're in second place, Dunfermline, top the table with five wins out of five. Transfer business-wise, we did a bit. We did a fair amount of business. We sold Emilian, Emilio Lawrence to St Mirren, of all teams, um, for a bit of money, which is fine. We have brought in Jordan Xerxes. Not Joshua, Jordan Xerxes. Um, he's dropped down from Bayer in Germany, where he was playing. I mean, we don't have this league on. They finished third. He played 33 times for the team that finished third, and now he's playing in the Scottish Championship on a free transfer. I've got high hopes for Jordan. I've got very high hopes for Jordan. You are going to be leading our lines. We've got Digibro Utara as well, who can be a left winger, right winger, or maybe a striker. We obviously have not spent any money. Usman Jammer is an 18-year-old new gen central defender signed from Newcastle. He might play a lot of football. He's actually kind of borderline good enough to play for us. This and these attributes are borderline good enough to play for us. We're not a good team. We've brought in Will Mannion, a free transfer goalkeeper, who might be our number one. I'm not quite convinced on that one. Bruno Giordano is also another pretty sizable signing, if you ask me, from Tranmere. Is that where he's playing? I mean, he went to Wolves for 8.25 million and we've brought him from Tranmere on a free. He's had a weird career, but he's been brought in. Shola Shortaya from Man United on a free transfer. Once again, a very good signing. What we've done here is we've thrown all of our eggs at a few baskets. And if we don't get promoted, we might financially cripple ourselves. But Shortaya is in. Robbie McCrory is also in. We brought in two number one goalkeepers. McCrory's probably better, isn't he? And from a formation standpoint, we're doing the 4-2-4 Gagan Press, which is kind of my normal go-to formation. I've stuck Mannion in as our number one, although I might probably change that to McCrory. We've got Jordeo playing as the DLP. If I don't put him there, I think they actually make him the ball winner for some reason. I don't know why. Xerxes obviously is going to be playing up front. Every other position, open. Don't care who really plays wherever. As long as we go up, that's what we need to do. We need to go up. And thankfully for us, as we jump to the end of the season, we have been promoted to the Scottish Premiership. 24 wins, 9 draws, 3 defeats. We are champions of the championship, and we are up into the actual Premiership. How do, did we do? We got knocked out in the Scottish Cup fourth round by Queen's Bloody Park. What? I hate, I hate Queen's Park. I hate them. I know, don't know why. I mean, I know why. You've watched the video. But Queen's Park seems to just knock us out all the time. Via Play Cup, we get knocked out in the league round what is this trophy? What is it? Is it a thing? We lose to Aberdeen Reserves. That doesn't sound good, does it? So looking at the squad, we stuck with Jordeo and Xerxes for the season. I did basically just say, play whoever you want in goal. And I think by the looks of it, it was McCrory playing 37 times. So Jordeo gets 10 goals and 11 assists. Short tie with 11 assists as well. 10 and 10 for Ben Quinn. Nathan Short, 18 goals and 15 assists for him. He's rubbish. I'm sorry, Nathan, you're not very good. In the grand scheme of things, you're not very good. But putting in that kind of performance, 16 goals, 15 assists. I'll take it. I will certainly take it. Jamie Gullen, 22 goals as well. I assume he is playing alongside uh, Xerxes up front. He's leaving, actually signing for St. Johnstone at the end of the season. Because, again, I don't think he's that great. And then Jordan Xerxes, 23 goals, 11 assists, 18 and 10 in the league. We're into the Scottish Premiership for the final season can we do, I mean, can we do anything? Can we honestly, can we do anything? Can we just finish top half? 
winning the cup, I feel like, is is it's a stretch. It's certainly a stretch. Usman Jamma played a lot. He played 26 times. I didn't even force that. Usman Jamma might be the best signing we've ever made. Anyway, let's jump to the start of Season 5 back in the Scottish Premiership. And let's try and win ourselves the cup and finish second. So then at the start of the final season, we have already done some transfer business. We have already done some transfer business. And I'm not convinced we're going to be very good. You can probably already see a couple of names on the screen. This is actually a player that we signed halfway through season four. And I just kind of ignored him. Aaron Morley, 27 year old English defence midfielder on a free transfer. He's all right, isn't he? He's not bad. We have signed Mika Biereth, formerly of Leeds Wigan, Valwijk. Arsenal, Fulham, and a few other teams. 24-year-old Danish striker. I'm hoping to get a lot of goals out of him. Xerxy and Beerith up front could be actually quite a potent, a potent attack force. For £325,000, we have signed Robbie Kelly, a new gen from Falkirk. £325,000 is a lot of money, but also he's really fast and he's got 15 finishing. I'm basically hoping that we can just outscore opposition, which is obvious, but I'm hoping if we concede 10... We'll score 15. That's my that's kind of my plan. Obviously, I don't want to concede 10, so because of that, we have signed Zach Orr, 23-year-old English central defender, formerly of Aberdeen and Arsenal in real life. I think he's actually at Southampton, if I'm not mistaken. He's good. I've had him on last season's football manager and the one before that. He's got some potential. We've also signed Josh Clark, who's a 22-year-old Northern Irish goalkeeper, because we needed some more goalkeepers. We didn't have enough, basically, so he's come in on a free transfer. And we've also signed Kobe Small, who is an English central defender on loan from Motherwell for the season. This is how low we are having to scrape the barrel. We're loaning players from other teams in our league to play for us, and they're not massively very good. Kobe Small probably will be getting a lot of football for us. And we've also signed Andre Dezel, who's a 28-year-old English central midfielder, formerly of Cardiff, QPR and Ipswich. Again, I think this is a decent signing. At 28, he's probably one of the most experienced players in the squad. And I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with what we've done so far. Obviously, we're only on the 1st of July. Plenty of the transfer window still to go. So there will be more strengthening. Just to make you aware as well, obviously, we've not done anything just yet. Really, we are expected to get relegated and finish bottom of the table. So the fact that I want to finish second is kind of important. And I feel like we need to shift the goalpost once again. Let's finish above 10th. 9th and above. Anything above 9th is a, is a win. St Mirren, frustratingly, 5th. Where did they finish last season? I feel like I shouldn't care, but I do care. They finished 6th place. So, that's the season we got sacked. They finished 7th. They then finished 6th. Can I point out? 2 points. 2 points difference. That's all it was. Who who took over? Right, who took over? So, they, they brought in a man, John Robertson, for half a year and sacked him as well. I mean... And then they have Billy McKay, and then Mark McCormick has come in as well. And he's doing, I guess, okay. He's been there for half a season as well. I mean, you kind of got rid of somebody who was doing a decent job for people who weren't. You, it's, it's a weird thing that they've done. Anyway, we're in charge of Inverness. One more season to go. Let's jump forward to the end of the transfer window. Hopefully more business has been done. And hopefully we're not predicted to finish bottom. So, five games in, mid-table, seventh place. We are not close to uh, St Mirren, which is a team that obviously I want to do better than. We're also not close to Queen's Park, which is a team who I want to do better than because I hate them with a passion for some reason. Seventh place after five games, one win, three draws. We beat Rangers. Rangers are ninth. What's happened to them? Anyway, we beat Rangers. We've drawn with Dundee, Hearts and Queen's Park and we've lost against St Mirren. That's kind of annoying. What transfer business have we done? We signed Romario Barrow. From Porto, technically. I mean, he got released. But we've signed Romario Barrow, who I'm not convinced looks very good. But everything about him says that he should be. He's worth 15 to £17 million. Pounds. He's played for Porto. He's played for Porto a fair amount. 19 times, in fact, playing for Porto. So he's good. There's something good about Romario Barrow. We've brought him in. He's going to be playing as a ball in a midfielder, I assume, next to, I've forgotten his name, Bruno Giordeo. So I'm kind of happy with that midfield. So in terms of starting 11 or players that we're going to fix in, we've got Shortire on that left-hand side, which I don't think we need to do, but I'm doing it just in case because we've got some half-decent wingers. We've got Xerxes and Kelly up front, and that's it. Kelly is a four-and-a-half-star player somehow, which goes to show you how bad our team is that this is nearly a five-star footballer, and he's 18. I need some goals from you. You've got three so far in the Viapai Cup, but zero in the league. 
But thankfully for us, Xerxes got two, Shortai has got two, actually Xerxes got, yeah, Xerxes got two, sorry. Barrow's got a goal as well. Nathan Shaw as well, chipping in against Dundee United. He's still not very good, but the, f the fact that he's scoring goals, I will take that. We are now going to jump forward to the end of the season, where we are, I, mean, I guess, what competitions are we in? We're in three competitions. The Cinch Premiership, mid-table. Scottish Cup, they want us to be competitive. I want us to get to the semi-final. The Viaplay Cup knocked out. We're knocked out in the group stage of the Viaplay Cup. This is like the Johnson's Paint Trophy, isn't it? Is that what it is? So we... Dunfermline and Montrose. So we beat Elgin 7-1. And we lost against Kelty Hearts, Dunfermline and Montrose. Uh, I mean, playoffs. Technically, we drew with Kelty Hearts and Dunfermline. But still, that's... I mean, I don't like this competition. It's nonsense, isn't it? Anyway, let's jump to the end of the season and we're going to come straight back onto this page. Okay, we can't jump straight back to that page, but we can jump to this one. We finished 8th place. Rangers finished 7th. What happened to Rangers? So Hibs finished in 2nd place. Celtic obviously won the league. I've just seen... We're in the Europa League. Did, did we win the cup? Did we win the cup? We won the Scottish Cup. We won the Scottish Cup. We beat Celtic in the final. What has happened? Hold on. Right, so I think we came in at the third round. Fourth round? Fourth round. So we beat Dumbarton, which is fair enough. A 3-0 win. We beat St Mirren. 3-0. Stick it up your ass, St Mirren. You deserve that one. In the quarterfinal, we beat Spartans. 3-2 in extra time. And then in the semi-final, we beat Motherwell 2-1 at Hampden Park. And then in the final, a 2-1 win against Celtic. We've won the Scottish Cup. we won the Scottish Cup. Dazelle with a goal, Xerxes in the 76th minute. We've won the Scottish Cup. I mean, we kind of weren't good enough to win it, but the fact that we scored twice and they scored once shows you that we were good enough to win it. Superb performances from Zach. Or I mean, Kobe Small, on loan from Motherwell has won the Scottish Cup. What's happened? Dazel with a 7.4 midfield. Xerxes as well up there. Kelly's not done very well by the looks of it. So let's take a look at the squad. So goals-wise, Robin Kelly actually got 17 goals. Robin, Robbie Kelly, sorry. 17 goals in all competitions. 12 in the league, 2 in the Scottish Cup, 3 in the Viaplay Cup. He's still good, isn't he? He's still pretty good. We've got Xerxes, 16 goals, 7 assists. He's also looking pretty good. Short tire, nine goals, but 16 assists. So doing the business on that left-hand side, getting the assists in. And then, I mean, we didn't score a lot of goals, did we? Did not really score a lot of goals. Barrow getting six actually is quite impressive from defensive midfield, which I'm, I'm okay with that. Nathan Shaw getting six, but 12 assists. That's a lot of assists for a player. I'll say it again. Sorry, buddy, who I don't think is particularly good. He's just quite fast. He's not even massively fast, is he? He's got 13 pace. Anyway... Nathan Shaw's done quite well for us in the two seasons we've been here. Because I've won the Scottish Cup, do I become a favoured person? I do. I'm a favoured personnel because we won the Scottish Cup. I mean, I was not expecting that. I'm a favoured personnel because we won the Scottish Cup. Did am, am I still part of St Mirren's kind of thing? Am I still on there? Was I even on there in the first place? Deli Alley's there, fair enough. Um, I feel like I'm not because we didn't really do much, did we? But the, the fact that... In our little five seasons, we've gone from St Mirren taking them to third place twice, then getting sacked after finishing seventh place, dropping down a league to sign for Inverness, winning the league, and then winning the cup. Something's... We're a brilliant manager. We're a brilliant manager. Sometimes, what I'm going to say is very philosophical now. Sometimes you've got to take a step back to take a step forward, and that is exactly what we've done. And we have kind of sort of maybe successfully completed the challenge that I set out because I did say I wanted to win the Scottish Cup just wasn't expecting it to be like this 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 wasn't what was expected thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy do please remember to leave a like subscribe if you are new and I'll see you in the next one